What's going on, all you Valhalla enthusiasts? Your two favorite Vikings are back once again, and we are thrilled to be reviewing a movie that we've both been anticipating for many months now, ever since we heard it announced. We're talking about Robert Eggers' new film, The Northmen. Yeah, Uncle Robert's back. The man, the myth, the legend. Huge fan of his work coming from The Witch to The Lighthouse to the brand new film, The Northmen, with a much larger budget this time around with an action pack, um, an ensemble, a lot of great actors. Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman plays Bang, Ethan Hawke, Anya Taylor Joy, and uh, Willem Dafoe. So this is a stack lineup. The Viking Prince on his quest to avenge his father's murder. And we get a great little introduction here with a young Amleth who, uh, you know, witnesses father being murdered by his uncle, uh, basically murders him. He doesn't know why at first you learn throughout the film, why, where the jealousy stems from and all that. And what uh, old Claus Bang Fjornir's, uh, you know, motivations are for this. And not only does he kill his father, but he sort of uh, kidnaps the mother as well, played by Nicole Kidman. Um, so basically before um, his father, played by Ethan Hawke, gets murdered, he, you know, he tells him that, you know, people are always going to be after me. If somebody kills me, son, I want you to avenge my death. I want you to go after them. And I want you to promise this to me. They have this uh, sort of, uh, you know, seance in a cave. They do this whole uh, scene in a cave there where they do they actually get down on all fours and they start barking like dogs and howling like wolves and they actually drink from a bowl with like this bone broth in it basically and they they try to channel this wild viking energy and there's a lot of scenes like this but, and this one in the particular sets up sets the stage for the whole movie we understand that you know Amleth's whole purpose in life is going to be to avenge his father's death, which happens, of course, right after they come out of this cave and do this crazy, you know, ritual inside there. Right away, he gets killed, and it uh, the story goes from there. We flash forward many years later to a grown Amleth who is now this hulking beast of a Viking man, played by Alexander Skarsgård, who we've known from you know True Blood. And, uh, you know, he played Tarzan. He got ripped for this one. He did all the steroids in the world. He worked out with Hulk Hogan. You know, he was on all the protein shakes. He got huge, cut like a Viking. And he really nails this performance. And a lot of the believability, not only from his physique, is in his eyes and his attitude. You know, he doesn't have a lot of dialogue, being this savage beast of a man. Um, but uh, he, he displays the rage that you'd want to see from one of these Viking warriors, these savages and a very intense scene at the beginning there, when they go on their first berserker rage, we see Alexander Skarsgård just go through and slaughter just a whole town of people basically. And it's an awesome scene to set the whole movie up. Yeah. But going back to that cave scene where you were talking about when he was a young man, him and his father, Ethan Hawke, they go in there, they end up like tripping balls and there's like a wall full of fire. And then they have Willem Dafoe's character that's all trippy. Um, it's, it's much like an art house film. A lot of scenes in this movie, it's like pretty mind boggling and trippy at times, like uh, some things going up in space and things like that. Kind of seeing what this character M is going through at a young age and then fast sporting. As an older man, as you were saying, you know, looking much like a Viking, he's jacked, he's huge. He's, he's going after his uncle that, that killed his father. He hasn't forgotten. You know, it's been 30, probably something years later. And the only thing on his mind is getting through day to day. This is Robert Eggers' first venture into a blockbuster film, but he certainly brings over his visual aesthetic style from his first two movies, you know, being The Witch, his very first movie, and then the last movie, The Lighthouse. He brings over a lot of that, you know, trippy visual style, like you were mentioning, in a lot of scenes. And this movie definitely feels like a blockbuster, but it also mixes in his art house feel with it and it just makes the film all the all the better for me this experience was pretty mind-boggling being in the theater seeing all these trippy scenes they do all the you know the rituals that vikings do with the berserker scene we see his thoughts his visions that he sees just some really intense visual scenes and i love the world he created here and how they filmed it looks very dark and gray, as you'd imagine this world, the savage world would be back in the day with these Vikings going around. 
trying to conquer these lands and take out these people. But uh, they really just capture the feel of this time and the look and the savagery from these Vikings. Um, and I love the cast that he put together for this film. You know, you get a lot of top notch actors, obviously Ethan Hawke, um, you know, Anya Taylor-Joy is in the cast as Olga. Willem Dafoe is like the, he's kind of like the fool or the jester at the beginning. And, uh, you know, his character comes back in a crazy trippy scene uh, towards the middle of the film too. But yeah, that was the first thing that struck me. It was just the look of this film. It's awe inspiring and really captured the, the scope that he was going for in this film of this, you know, tale of him trying to avenge his father's death and having to basically travel this cold, dark, uh, you know, dire world in order to uh, fulfill that uh, mission that he set out for. Absolutely. And he really stays true to the Nordic tales. He co-wrote the script with a person named Sean, I think is how you pronounce it. So they kept it true, much like Robert Eggers' other films, you know, the Puritan era with the witch. And then he had, you know, the, the lighthouse of like old sea shanties and stories and things like that. But this time around, he kept it true to the Nordic tales the dialect is, you know, absolutely just like that. So, you know, some old songs they would sing and, um, you know, bringing out the drum and things like that. It felt like you're going back in that time. It felt exactly like back in the day with the Vikings, you know, taking rain and taking out innocent people along the way, you know, just conquering lands and things like that. You felt like you went back in time. So that's what Robert Eggers does. He's a very stylistic director, colors, very dark movie, cold at times. And it felt like you're right there with them. Absolutely. He makes it really authentic feeling this movie the whole time. And he brings over his friends, like you mentioned, not only the writers, the cast too, of his first two films, you see people, um, you know, most of the cast from both movies, The Witch and The Lighthouse, you see William Defoe, obviously, and you see the mom and dad uh, that were from The Witch, in addition to Anya Taylor-Joy. So he brings over a lot of the players and we see some other uh, characters Two, from other big uh, budget, you know, fantasy worlds like Game of Thrones, we see the mountain have a little awesome, uh, you know, cameo. One scene there, which is awesome, a game that they play um, when, uh, you know, Amleth is taken hostage by his uncle, basically taken as a, as a slave. It's all part of the plan to be captured. Uh, but they play this dangerous game and, uh, you know, it's basically the mountain versus Amleth. Um, and it's uh, a brutal scene and something happens to um, Fjornor's child and uh, Amleth has to come to the rescue and kind of defeat them out. Really intense scene with these big, brutal, savage guys playing this, you know, basically game where anybody could die at any time. Um, but uh, yeah, and in addition to the cast, he, uh, you know, he brings over the same sort of uh, style that we saw from The Witch um, and The Lighthouse. Um, Obviously, the the scenes where uh, he has visions in his head and he, you know, he can see the future, you know, basically he, he gets these glimpses once he meets Olga. And, uh, you know, in the film, there's kind of a switch where, you know, he's about to go off his mission. You know, he's he's kind of found happiness with Olga being kind of next to her as a slave there being captive by his uncle. Um, and they form this relationship and he's going to kind of get away with it for a while, but then, you know, something happens and he realizes, you know, no, he has to go see this through. That's his, that's his life's uh, goal and uh, something he promised his father. And he's going to go to the gates of hell at any cost. And let me tell you, this movie has some awesome action in it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not 100% action. It builds up to a lot of it, but the scenes that it does, it just, brutal scenes you know you get beheadings you get people's skin ripped you get bodies you know just ripped open you see a lot of blood you see sequences where uh, you know there's like these demons that are coming after him and he has to he has to go on this mission to get this sword that's kind of his destiny and it sets up this really awesome scene with this big beast that he has to kind of take down to get the sword just some awesome awesome action scenes um, and brutal brutal gore and action that you see but it's not it's not overdone or anything and it's well done robert eggers kind of holds back to the point uh but then he unleashes it in the scenes that he needs to especially in that final uh battle you know obviously where you get fjornor versus amleth at the gates of hell and it's just an awesome spectacular ending by the end of the movie my jaw was kind of open at what i've seen just how he filmed this and how they put this huge movie together with this giant scope and it, it made me think of like, you know, what if Robert Eggers was brought on to do sort of like a Game of Thrones kind of uh, production or even like his own like Viking tale saga 
on one of these streamers and had hours to do this. He just, it would be amazing. But uh, we get the Northman and it's an epic movie for sure. Yeah, he's really good uh, at Robert Eggers at uh, period pieces. So I think he would really be great doing some more old school Viking tales like this because it really had me invested. This is definitely his best movie to date. Um, really, you know, starting off, it starts off slow building the story, what's happening with this Amleth character and what happens to him as they fast forward and this quest he goes on to avenge his father. And it's really fantastic just the way the setup, the story is really well done, really crafted, great arcs in this as well with a lot of the characters, you know, bringing in Nicole Kidman, not a fan of hers at all. <laughs> Always feel like she plays the same character, but she was decent in the role, you know, being the mother captured by the murderer being the uncle and then Amleth finding her years later she moved on she started another family so she didn't really give a shit about Amleth's father being Ethan Hawke so he shows a lot about her character and uh, it was pretty interesting at the end it's all payback and it's really really great payoff I would say at the end it's really epic the third act is balls to the wall action a lot of great gruesome kill scenes I don't want to spoil too much but with this guy's nose or lack thereof nose and the sword which is really great <laughs> uh, but there's some really memorable kill scenes in here um and they couldn't really figure out who you know who's killing off all these people in this village it's only the big bulking six seven guy it's <laughs> right. a slave that uh is pretty obvious but uh really good payoff at the end i love alexander skarsgård in this in this film this is definitely probably one of his best performances he trying to get this uh this project going for like 10 years and he eventually spoke to robert eggers about it got it off the ground so i'm very thankful for that the final the final product of the northman really fantastic i was super impressed i'm glad i got to see this in the theater and it's a movie you must see in the theater. It's absolutely uh, an experience that you want to have in the movie theater. It wouldn't be quite the same at, at home, you know, maybe on a big screen with your your sound system turned all the way up. But just the theatrical experience of this movie was mind mind blowing. Um, I loved every second of it. I wanted more, man. I, I would love more in this universe. They just created something special here. And you could tell that they put all their heart and love into this film. Alexander Skarsgård, like you mentioned, this, you know, this is obviously one of his best roles here. Just, you know, the emotions that just he plays through his eyes and this, this, the fierceness that he brought on for this role that he had to undertake, especially in that beginning scene where we see him go into full like Viking berserker mode was really intense. And I was like, holy shit, he really, he really did it. You know, he, he brought it for this role, which he knew that he had to be in kind of like this Hollywood darling now, you know, he shows up and as the pretty boy in a lot of films. So, you know, he had to, he had to bring the intensity on this one and he really delivered in this. I was very impressed with his performance as I was by the whole cast. Anya Taylor-Joy, of course, she's always great. Uh, she brings a lot to this role too, you know, portraying this character that uh, sees Amleth for who he is and sees inside his heart and knows what his, you know, life's mission is. And, uh, you know, she's uh, a part of his life by the end of the film, too. And they're tied together in their destiny and they're going to ride together all the way to Valhalla. Um, so with that being said, I absolutely enjoyed and loved The Northman. This was uh, one of my most anticipated movies of the year, and I'm glad that it delivered. Uh, Focus Features has a big hit on their hands here. I hope it continues to make it money. Um, in theaters for the next couple of weeks and then comes to the streamers so more people can see it. And I hope it's beloved by everybody. And I have a feeling it's going to be, you know, a cult classic as the years go by. It's just a film that you won't forget and an experience unlike any other. So with that being said, I am going to give The Northman a four and a half out of five Ethan Hawke hair pieces. <sighs> Another epic tale by writer-director Robert Eggers, one of my favorite uh, directors in the business working today. I'm so excited to see where his future goes. Uh, you know, they've been talking about Nosferatu, but I don't think that's ever going to happen, but I'm interested to see his future projects. They keep getting better and better uh, with each one he puts out. The Lighthouse blew me away. The Northman is way, you know, way better. It has a bigger budget. There's a lot more to do with this bigger story and costume design and all the effects and everything great battle scene. So I was really impressed. One of my most anticipated films of the year, and it really delivered like you were saying, and I highly recommend that. So with that being said, I'm going to give Robert Eggers, the Northman, a four and a half out of five Alexander Skarsgård hair pieces. So we're interested in hearing your guys' thoughts on the Northman. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe.
Also check out these wild Viking enthusiasts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and our website, cinefellas.com for the latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what Robert Eggers comes up with next. What's going to be the next film? Is he going to go low budget again, or is he going to try to do another blockbuster? Can't wait to see where his career goes from here. With this one, he really showed a lot to me by mixing, you know, this big, huge budget film with his art house style. And I really hope he chooses a great project next. Like his, you know, next project's like one of my most anticipated now. I can't wait to see where his career leads him and like what he's going to bring to the masses next after the Northman. He killed it on this one. We thank you guys for watching our review and we'll be back very soon for another Cinefellas movie review. So until next time, it's time to charge the gates of hell and enter Valhalla. Cheers! Cheers!